Romans 11, 1. It says, and I say then, has God cast away his people? God forbid. You know, so, so there's a lot of craziness going on, and people be thinking that God just forgot about them. It says, no, God forbid, I haven't forgot about you. It says, for I also am a, uh, this Paul's talking, I'm also an Israelite, the seed of Abraham, the tribe of Benjamin. It says, God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew ahead of, ahead of time. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elijah? This is how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. So at the time, Elijah, this is Jezebel after Elijah, and Elijah's like, man, they didn't kill all the prophets. You just left me by myself. He said, you just don't know me. He says, I got 7,000 other folk of remnant. You're not by yourself. And then now when we get to verse 5, he, he, he's bringing it closer to everyday life. He says, even so, then at this present time, also there's a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. Basically, what it's saying is, even now, God has a remnant. Just like back then with Elijah, he has a remnant. Sometimes we feel isolated. Sometimes we think, oh, well, all this craziness happening. What about where is God? God is like, just like a remnant I had then, I have a remnant now. And he says, according to the election of my grace, meaning that I chose them, is not because of their efforts and their work. It's because of my favor. And uh, if you read uh, the message version or, or the uh, New Living Translation version of that scripture, it says very few of us have benefited from that favor because we haven't embraced what God has done. We haven't really, really embraced. Some of us think that our toil and our work, and it's all about our toil and our work, as opposed to floating in the faith and the favor of God, which, you know, again, in Revelation 17, 14 says, at the end, the people that will be rolling with Jesus um, would be those that Called, chosen, and faithful. It's basically showing you the process. Many are called, few are chosen. Even very few others are faithful, consistently holding on, like we talked about on, uh, I don't remember, maybe Sunday. <laughs> you know, holding on to that faith. I know we talked about faith. Oh, it was, it was Sunday, 9-15. All right, so very few people have that enduring belief that are faithful, you know, not just faith moments, but the just shall live by faith, Romans 117. God is saying, I have this remnant, and this remnant are not just people that are acknowledging me. There are people that embrace the sanctification and setting their selves apart to be chosen and used by me. And then there's others that are not just being chosen and being used from time to time. They're actually faithful. You know, the scripture says, when the son of man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? You know, I believe that's Luke 18, right? So that that so for him to find faith, that means you're faithful all the time. You're not, you know, you're like, I'm just gonna chill on faith today. That might be the day he show up. Will he find will he find you in faith then? Because every time God shows up to make an exchange, to give you some heaven on earth, you have to have faith to make the exchange. So so you can't you can't be visiting faith, you can't have part-time faith, you have to be faithful, right? You have to have enduring belief. That's what faith is. You have to all the time. You have to be like the virgins that kept the oil lit. <laughs> you know, they kept their oils. We're we just going to keep it lit because Jesus could come at any time. Right? So we have to, uh, you know, that's why the scripture says to watch and pray. All right, so I gave you that. I gave you that. So, again, God, what, what we, we made a case that uh, God has a remnant. And God has a remnant even now, a remnant of chosen people that are faithful. And so God is galvanizing. Remember, I'm going to call them from all over the earth, galvanizing this remnant together for this time. So the remnant doesn't look like everybody else. The remnant has seems like they've been in covert. but and, and most of them are sitting around going, I know there's more in me. Why am I not being used at this time? Because God has an appointed time. See, you're on the tutors and governors until the appointed time of the Father, Galatians 4, 1 and 2, right? So just like, uh, 
remember with Gideon, 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 I think he got like 30,000 folk. So God's like, that's too many people. See, because if you use those people, it'll be like, y'all delivered yourself. He said, no, no, they're going to know I did it. And so he says, I just have people uh, go drink at the lake. And then he told them those that lap like a dog or whatever. But he grabbed, Gideon had 300 folk to fight thousands. See, there was a remnant. David, David had, uh, you know, basically David's son tried to come against him. So David had to flee his own kingdom. So he's in the cave. And it said uh, some special men came in that cave with him. There was a remnant because God was going to finally bring uh, Judah and Israel all together. But so there was a remnant. And it, it, it said, uh, uh, some of them, David wanted to drink. They went through the whole camp of the Philistines just to get them a drink. <laughs> you know, because the, the, the water was, on, was through the army. Oh, you thirsty? We got you. <laughs> right. So it said that they were special. Some of them were special. They were left-handed. They could He's a lefty, but 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 they was uh, you know even in Judges it talks about the seven hundred left-handed people and how they had special skills. They were a remnant to to do special things for a particular reason, and so they they're in this cave for a particular time. Now the interesting thing is, um, well let me just give you this last scripture on I'm being set apart, and then we'll talk about how God's trying to bring us uh, out of that that covert or that covering uh, out of the hidden place of being a river. But let's look at Deuteronomy 7. We'll do verse 6. It says, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord God, unto the Lord thy God. The, the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord did set his love upon you, nor, okay, the, lo the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for you were fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, uh, has the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen and from the hand of Pharaoh? Let's go to the same book, 14. It was pretty much, I think it's saying the same thing. Uh, verse 2. It says, uh, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord God, and the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar, special people unto himself, above all the nations that... Are upon the earth. And that parallels to 1 Peter 2 9. You are a chosen generation. Uh, well, let's go to 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So, chosen, peculiar, special. Uh, for, uh, Psalms 139. 14, fearfully and wonderfully made. So God has specially designed this, and we just found out that there's a remnant. You know, and I gave you David and them in the cave. That's 1 Samuel 22. So they were put in a cave for protection, right? So they were set apart as a remnant for protection. They were put in the cave, or, or you're being, you've been held in covert all this time for, to protect you. For a particular time, but not forever. If you notice, they were in the ark, right? Um, they were in, in, in a level of protective custody, but not forever. They didn't stay in the ark. <laughs> you know, it was like, guys in the ark, and we just go ride the ark out. Now, the temptation is there was a flood. There, there was actually a traumatic experience. People were yelling and screaming because they were dying. Because of the water. They were banging and let me in, you know. And so you just imagine just millions of people dying. And there's a flood. So you're protected, safe. You're in the ark. And you're in this ark all this time. Your, temp your temptation is, and then you have all your food resources because all the animals is in there too. Producing eggs and whatever, you know, uh, whatever you need. So that you could be tempted to just stay in the ark. 
but they weren't supposed to be in the ark forever. 